the firing of a two-stage rocket on 21st of November 1963 from an unlikely little Kerala fishing village, Tumba, saw the birth of the Indian space program. The launch was smooth and problem-free. India had entered the space age. The father of the Indian space program, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, held the view that it was not a question whether a developing country such as India could afford to go in for space technology, but whether it could afford not to. It required an extraordinary vision and courage of conviction to state so in the 1960s. There are some who question the relevance of space activities in a developing nation. To us, there is no ambiguity of purpose. We do not have the fantasy of competing with the economically advanced nations in the exploration of the moon or the planets or manned spaceflight. But we are convinced that if we are to play a meaningful role nationally and in the community of nations, we must be second to none in the application of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society. The 60s were primarily devoted to building up of expertise and infrastructure. Though there was some assistance from France, USA and USSR, most of the efforts were indigenous. By 1965, a space science center was established in Tumba. And on Independence Day 1969, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, was formed under the Department of Atomic Energy. Subsequently, in 1972, ISRO was brought under the Department of Space, DOS, and has since been responsible for the execution of the National Space Program. The 70s were a crucial phase for the development of the Indian Space Program. The Satellite Instructional Television Experiment, SITE, using the US satellite ATS-6, saw the telecast of a series of educational programs on health, family planning, agriculture, and the like in over 2,500 villages. The launch of the first Indian satellite, Aryabhatta, from the USSR, was followed by Bhaskara 1 and 2, and Apple, an experimental communication satellite. The successes of these projects were responsible for India's decision to procure its own satellite system, INSAT. While the first generation of INSAT satellites were procured from the United States, the second generation INSAT-2 series are designed and built by ISRO. The INSAT system is a multi-purpose satellite system, catering primarily to the needs for telecommunications, television broadcasting and meteorology. SLV-3 was the first demonstration of India to build satellite launch vehicles. It had its first successful flight in July 1980, placing a 35-kilogram Rohini satellite into a near-Earth orbit. Followed two successful launches of the augmented satellite launch vehicle, ASLV, employing solid propellant capable of putting 150 kilograms class payloads in near-circular orbit. But things really got moving with the development of the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV. PSLV, employing solid and liquid propellants, is capable of putting over a ton of IRS class of satellites into a polar sun synchronous orbit. There is now the question of developing user confidence if the PSLV is to capture a niche in the space market. Purely in terms of payload capability, the PSLV has all the features of a very good launch vehicle for launching low-Earth satellites for remote sensing missions or communication satellite systems. The way to achieve user confidence is to launch more and more domestic and foreign satellites. The Indian Space Program has done well so far, despite organizational problems and in spite of funding that is truly frugal by international standards. Not only in building world-class satellites for communications and remote sensing, but also the launch of remote sensing spacecraft from its own launch vehicles. To think, we didn't even have this technology 36 years ago.
India now has the infrastructure. All she needs is a strong push into the next millennium.